So we went into this game. We had the whole week, Stoke, where we were discussing the idea of, you know, this is a playoff team. It's a real litmus test game. And how do we feel now about the Broncos' playoff chances after what happened? But we can't lose sight of what the number one goal of this year is, and that is to come away from this season feeling like they got the right guy in Bo Nix. So every week it's that up to the minute, up to the moment, evaluation of Bo. How would you feel he played yesterday? I thought he was fine. Uh, he did some things that I liked um, there in the first half, obviously showing his athletic ability, scrambling around again, uh, making some plays with his legs, nice catch. Um, and and he made some good throws. Obviously, there was a throw there to Troy Franklin he would like to have back. Uh, he one-hopped an in cut um, where he kind of threw it off his back foot, but – you know, I think overall, uh, when I look at Bo, it, I don't I don't say he was the problem here at all. We got to have our receivers. I think this is important. I don't know how, you know, Sean, what did he make, estimate carry around the football when he fumbled? I don't know what Sean does with the receivers, but we got to have some kind of drill where we practice batting the ball down and not batting the ball up. This isn't volleyball. We're not trying to, it's not, we're not trying to bat it up. Um, so we're, we're doing that, and that's not helping Bo out when we bat the ball up in the air. That's not good. So I don't know what they need to do for the receivers, but um, certainly uh, to stop hitting the ball in the air would be a, a good start. It just Bo was fine. He, he really was. I, I thought he made some good throws there in the first half and did some good things, and the second half was a disaster. It's all good. It, it really is. It's one game. You just got off of winning five or six games. You, you got your butt whip in Baltimore. Uh, but Bo, yeah, Bo, I think there's some positives to take away from this. You're playing a really good team on the road. Um, and um, I, I thought the guys around him, again, you know, I'm, I sound a little bit like Bednar here, you know, defending the goalie, right? The guys around him could be better and help him out a little bit more. I love you guys. On the Rommelslaw.com <laughs> text line, Mike, you're spot on about the Ravens being ready after losing last week. Elite teams don't let, let that happen twice. Billy in Springfield, South Dakota. You and I were talking about this during one of the breaks. We want, if you're a Broncos fan, you want Kansas City to go out and win tonight, preferably in as big a blowout fashion as possible. The last thing you want is to have the Chiefs lose the type of game that the Ravens lost the week before at Cleveland. Chargers went into Cleveland and dominated the Browns. So try to figure this league out, huh? Well, that, that, <laughs> but but I think yeah. my point being is, hey, it, it's going to be hard hard enough to beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Let let's let sleeping dogs lie a little bit on this one. Let's let's not have the Chiefs be extra alert, having lost tonight to Tampa Bay, who's been decimated by injuries. Let's just all root for Kansas City to go out and have a nice, comfortable win tonight, okay? Yeah, I like that approach. I like that thought process there. Uh, certainly, that would be probably best-case scenario here. It, Kansas City wins again, um, and especially if they do it comfortably, then, then maybe you get a little bit different Kansas City. Does this change at all how you felt maybe a week ago at this time about what you wanted the Broncos to do at the trade deadline to what you now hope they do now, Mark? Why don't uh, has your opinion? Yeah, I know. I, I don't think. I don't think it's. I don't think it's changed. I mean, you're certainly not going to be a seller. Um, and I think Stokes said it earlier. You know, you don't want a one year rental. I mean, if you're going to get a player, you want somebody that's going to be able to, you know, to bolster your roster and and be a part of what you're building. So. Like, unless it's a really unique situation, I don't know that you're out there in the trade market going after anybody. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, you're still, listen, even if you, even if you become a wild card team, um, which is, you know, which is, you, you're, you're very capable of becoming a wild card team. Do we really think that you're going to go roughshod through the playoffs and, and beat teams like the Ravens or Kansas City or whoever you have to face? Probably not. You know, would you be able to compete with Houston and maybe beat Houston? Sure. But with that said, I mean, I just like I, I just like stay the course unless you get something that's a long term, you know, that could be a long term part of your team. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking at it as uh, kind of like how Mark uh, framed it there. Um I'm not trying to get a 
one year rental type of player, of course. Okay, that's we're not doing that here. I I don't mind. I'm open and receptive. If we could get a good deal on a play offensive playmaker, defensively, uh, we're really not looking for anything defensively. An offensive skill position playmaker to help our young quarterback out. If that guy's out there, and I don't care if this guy is 24 or 30 or 31, I am still open and receptive to trading for this guy. I mean, a lot of talk about Cooper Cup uh, the last couple weeks. They're not trading Cooper Cup now. They're they're going a little bit of heater there in L.A. But, you know, a guy 30, 31 years old, but he's still under contract for another couple years. I'm interested because I'm trying to help my young quarterback develop, and if there's good football players uh, available that could that could help do that and help our young quarterback out, I am open and receptive so, to so it. So it's as, as simple as this. You're talking about somebody who's, what, a young veteran, 20 – 25, 26 years old, uh, has a little bit of cost certainty with the, with his contract situation, and somebody that not only can come in and help this team now, but figures to be part of their future. If you can find that kind oh, of player. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And get a good deal on them. Um, and because how many players more, are, are like, how many players are out there like that? I don't know. I, I mean, not a lot, but. You know, you see certain trades, you're like, wow, I, I didn't expect that. Um, I didn't, uh, they got a pretty good deal on them. So I'm not sure how many players are out there or available like that. But, uh, you know, if there are, then you it, it, then then you're then you try to make the deal. And if not, guess what? Then you just move on and you keep plowing forward. So I think that's the Broncos situation right now. Um, you're, you're, you're listening. Certainly you're not selling anyone. You're not trying to trade anybody. Uh, maybe a Baron Browning would be the only guy that comes to mind here. Uh, but other than that, I think they're in a good spot to kind of be patient. And if there's a good deal to be had, then, then go make it. So approach stink the trade deadline. Like you're, you're still a rebuilding team, not, a team that yeah. is a player or two away, right? right. I, like, I'm fine I, with that. Like I, I was, I was calling that game yesterday in New England. That New England healthy scratches at two of the wide receiver positions. Guys that like guy, guys that are contributors, like third wide receiver type of guys. KJ Osborne, who you've heard from Minnesota, he's had some success in the league. They were a healthy scratch on him, fifth year out of Miami. There was a guy uh, on Thornton. Um, third year out of Baylor, who's been a little bit of a disappointment in New England, but, you know, talented guys that, that you know, are like your third wide receivers. That, so there are going to be guys that, that maybe don't have great name value, but it will be available out there for trade. So it's just kind of, it's just kind of, you got to make sure the guys are the right fit for your team if you decide to go that direction. But I'm with Stoke. Like, I'm not trying to rent a player. I'm not, I don't think we should be there. Then what I'm hearing is probably a team that does nothing tomorrow. Probably not. Yeah, I, I'm not expecting yeah. them to make any type of move. Maybe, maybe the Baron Browning situation, but he's been hurt, hasn't he? He didn't play yesterday, did he? Um, I, I, you know, but other than that, you you probably don't see the Broncos do anything tomorrow.